when it was really noisy during the height of the pandemic, stress and people were at their wits end and just threadbare. When I was feeling that way, I would just say to Megan, I'm going outside, I gotta go out and be in my bees. And it, it seems counterintuitive that opening a box of things, that, you know, there's 50,000 things that can possibly sting you inside that hive of bees. But it forces you to kind of zero in on that and focus on only that and you have to tune out all that noise of the world around you. And so it became my form of therapy. And I know there are a lot of others who really, uh, it was part of what helped us get through the stressful part of that last uh, couple of years that we've all gone through. And just to dig in and just focus, I gotta take care of this thing. And if I do it roughly, I'm gonna get stung. And so it, it just forces you to get into that zone and get out of the world that can be really chaotic. When we opened the Honey Exchange 10 years ago, if you wanted to become a beekeeper, you could find tools online and you could certainly go talk to people, you know, outside of the city um, at their barn or whatever to get your equipment. But we wanted to have a business that was a year round business that was open six days a week during regular business hours. So for people who had jobs, they could come after work and they could, you know, they could come on the weekend and they could talk to beekeepers. So you wanna know about classes? We usually publish the class schedule around Thanksgiving. So the beginner class taking you from, I don't know anything, which is where most of our beekeeping students come from. Now once in a while we have somebody who grew up going out with dad or granddad into the, into the hives. Um, and I, I, I choose those genders specifically because back in the day it was mostly men, mostly old fat white guys. So I'm like the old demographic and that has faded. Since we've offered the classes, three quarters of the students have been women. So there's this very quickly changing demographic of who's a beekeeper and it's, it encompasses everybody. We met um, when we were both living abroad. I was living in Barcelona, Spain, and Phil was living in Cork, Ireland. He was a Cornell student and I was a UC Berkeley student, junior year, so we met when I was 20. Kids, a couple of kids. <laughs> at that time, we did not see bees in our future at all. The only interaction I had had with anybody who kept bees, I knew a guy in college who was a buddy of mine from upstate New York, and his parents were beekeepers. And I thought, that's a really curious thing for just regular people to do. That seems like something I could get behind. Phil was a stay-at-home dad, and I was um, in the wine industry technology business. And he said, came home one day, he's like, I think I want to be a beekeeper. Then he became a beekeeper, and about a year later, I became a beekeeper, and then, then I was tired of my job, and we were thinking, what can we do together? We want to work together. So then we opened the Honey Exchange. When you first walk into the Honey Exchange, you'll see this beautiful mural. Um, our daughter, Mora, painted this mural, and so she came up with this, this design, which is a meeting of the Norse goddess Freya um, with the Celtic Saint Gopnate. Everything was hand, hand done and I'm just super proud of it and I think it is a welcoming, beautiful entryway for the Honey Exchange for all of our visitors to come and just feel good about being here right when they walk in the door. I thought I might get sick of honey at some point. Yeah. We're 10 years in now and I still am just blown away. I like my coffee sweet, so I have coffee, uh, honey my coffee every morning. Coffee Blossom Honey. Um, coffee Blossom Honey is a great one to go into coffee. We love to entertain whenever we throw a dinner party. It uh, starts with a platter of cheese and crackers and some pieces of honeycomb if we have it or some liquid honey if we want to go that route. I like the darker honey on salmon. Like I'll drizzle honey on salmon or scallops. So then maybe some white balsamic um, with honey dressing on that, just a little sprinkle on the top. Different honeys have very distinctive flavors. Once I realized that honey is more than just that little squeezy bear that you get at the grocery store, uh, it opened up this whole extra spice rack that I have when I want to cook yeah. because it can have so many different flavors. You can have really dark, intense honeys or really pretty perfumed honeys. Uh, and depending on what you're cooking, you can choose any of those spices. It's really great. A swarm of bees. That phrase is used colloquially where like, they were on them like a swarm of bees, like it's a dangerous, angry thing. Thanks, Hollywood. Um, in reality, a swarm is the hive's reproductive process. And so when a hive is thriving and successful, it wants to split itself in two like an amoeba would. Uh, and so it'll send the old queen with about two thirds of the population of bees just out to seek their fortune in the world. While they're looking for that place to live, they're hanging around somewhere. Sometimes it's in a tree, sometimes it's on a fence post. I love being a swarm gatherer because uh, you can just go out, 
sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, sometimes I have to get stung a few times to get them down, but the easy ones, like you went and got that one out by the mall, just hanging right in it front of a awesome. window of a restaurant. It was like right here, <laughs> there's a plate glass window, and everybody in the restaurant is like yeah. this on the other side. Just and I go walking up, terror. I'm wearing shorts and a t-shirt, flip-flops, put my veil on, put a little spritz of sugar water on there, get the, the box underneath it, bang them in it goes off like a bee bomb and then they all just settle back down and every you could literally hear from inside ah! it's yeah. so cool <laughs> and i'm like that's right i'm just standing over here. the side like, yeah that's my wife <laughs> <laughs> bees are important to our food systems if you like to eat things from the grocery store, uh, you need to realize that about three quarters of the dollar value of a grocery store has been pollinated by bees. Everything from almonds to blueberries to cucumbers and pumpkins. You can't have a pumpkin without a bee. And even for people that aren't into their fruits and vegetables, even if you're just a cheeseburger guy, uh, we still need bees to pollinate the crops for the grazing cattle in the dairy industry. So if you want to eat that, you still got to look after your bees. But the problem that the bees are having is that they've got a weakened immune system. There's so much garbage in their environment that they don't have the strength. And it's like when you're not well fed and well rested, you're more likely to, to come down with some sort of illness. And that's what's happening with the bees is that they're under these tremendous pressures, uh, a lot of habitat loss. You know, there isn't as much land for the bees to forage in. Uh, the land that they do have to forage in, if it's a suburban environment, that might be a lot of people who are spraying to get that perfect green lawn that uh, you can only get with chemicals. If they're in a rural environment, they might be going out to a cornfield where they're encountering uh, you know, biotech engineered corn and it's, it's not the best thing for them and it makes them unhealthy. The easiest thing you can do to help is what you don't do. Don't feel the need to obsessively kill clover and dandelions. Those are two huge nutritional sources for bees in the early part of the season. It can be the difference between a hive that's struggling to come out of winter and maybe not even gonna make it Dandelions bloom and now they've got plenty of food. They get pollen and nectar and, and tremendous abundance from those dandelions. It's the most important food for bees in the state of Maine, period. And so if you change your perspective about that, then you don't have to be dumping all those chemicals to get rid of those things. So just stop killing weeds, stop dumping chemicals. This is our observation hive. They're here all year round. They're, sometimes people wonder if we have to take them outside or we take them down for the winter. Uh, but there's a little pipe that runs through the wall, so you'll see them. They're flying around, going out to the neighborhood. Let's we'll see if we can find a dancer in here. Uh, this girl here, she's going to circle around and she's going to waggle. Waggle, 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 and then she'll circle around clockwise and waggle, 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 and then she'll circle clock, kind of clockwise, waggle, waggle. And what she's saying is if the sun is at compass north, you need to travel at that angle away from the sun. And how long she waggles tells them how far they have to travel. So giving direction and distance in a dance. We got into this business because we had seen the trend line happening and you know, beekeeping was growing. And then we saw the, the pandemic coming around the corner. We thought, all right, this is it. That, that's the thing. Uh, we're going to have to go and get serious jobs now. And then instead, we spent 18 months just playing catch up because it turned out to be one of those things uh, that people really connected with during the time when they were stuck in their homes, uh, didn't have much to do. And so they were able to look after a hive. Um, some people took their job home and so they were taking as much money home, but they didn't have as much to spend it on. We saw our numbers in beekeeping sales in 2020. There were some months we were up 90% over the prior year, which is just, it's outrageous. People were into gardening, they were into sourdough bread baking, and they were into beekeeping really big. Bees are not something you need to be scared of. Yes, they do have an ability to sting and they want to defend their family. But if you look at all the other things that bees do, once you take away the sting, that one negative thing, there's all kinds of cool stuff in there. Like the thing that I always try to teach kids is all the bees in that hive, they have no concern at all for themselves. They're only concerned about their community. And if you have a community of people or bees or whatever, where everybody's looking after everybody else, you don't need to worry about yourself. And so I try to teach that subject of empathy to kids because I think it, maybe that's one of the things that we're lacking a little bit in our society. At Native Maine, local is really all that matters to us. We source local where we can, and we take care of our local customers, whether it's restaurants, schools, 
or anything in between. So as far as like what we get from native Maine, we love Hyperlocal. We're so fortunate to have the best produce seasonally. Any local uh, amber dark maple syrup, we're gonna use that as any sort of sweetener. We also use uh, Pineland Farms corn for our lote currently. We're a local business with local people through local restaurants and into the local bellies of all of our constituents in the state of Maine. Hi everyone and welcome back to Plate the State. We had such a great time at the Honey Exchange with Phil and Megan. They are truly some of our most favorite people. So we're back at our kitchen at the Hancock Lumber Kitchen Design Showroom in Kennebunk. And we are so grateful to them for letting us use their beautiful space. Now let's go see what Chef Josh is going to make for us with all that beautiful honey we got from the Honey Exchange. Hey. Hey. So correct me if I'm wrong, but are we making dessert first today? We are. <laughs> I've got some recipes up my sleeves that you haven't seen yet. And since <laughs> honey is such a great part of our lives since we keep bees, and these are eggs for our chickens, all of this makes a great recipe for pot of creme. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of these ingredients, and this is some great Oakhurst dairy, milk and cream, and we're gonna pour that right into our and pot. And let me just say, don't worry about writing any of this down. All of these recipes are on our website at platethestate.com. So you can just sit back and relax. So that's some heavy cream. Okay. And there's some whole milk. Okay. Okay. All of that honey. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, this is gonna be so sweet. And then here's just a little bit of vanilla. So this is a little thicker, is this vanilla it's paste? like a vanilla paste, yeah. I love that. I love vanilla. Here we go. Okay. Go ahead, now we just wanna give that a good stir, combine all the ingredients. There we go. And we would love to have you follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Plate the State and show us your favorite honey recipes. Second. Maggie, that looks perfect. Awesome. I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna bring it back onto the stove top and bring okay. it up to a boil. While I'm doing that, here's five egg yolks and one whole egg. I want you to put that in that bowl and give it a nice whisk. Okay. Perfect. It's my workout for the day. Let me take that from you. Just tiring. <laughs> oh, you started off great. Perfect. <laughs> I got tired. Perfect. Fast. All right, well, you're going to doing that. I'm going to go start the coffee. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right, I'm going to grab our cream, milk, and honey mixture that we had. And as you can see, that honey is dissolved well. You just want to bring the cream and milk to scald. You don't want to let it char or burn on the bottom. Now we have our eggs whipped up. We have that wonderful cream milk honey mixture with the vanilla. And now I'm gonna add just a little bit at a time because I don't want to scramble our eggs. We're gonna just a little bit. And we're pouring that hot cream mixture in there. Once you get about half of it in, then we can just dump it in. Now that our custard is made, I'm gonna grab our ramekins. And I have them in just a nice warm water bath, not too hot. And we're gonna take our custard mix and we're just gonna fill up some ramekins about halfway. Here's a quick chef's trick. See the suds that come up every time you make a panna cotta or a creme brulee and you get the custard and you don't want those suds? If you have a little creme brulee torch or I use the old restaurant big torch here, just a quick little pop. It gets them all away. All right, so these custards look great. Got rid of all the suds on them. We wanna take just a piece of aluminum foil Lightly wrap, not too tight. 
and they're gonna go into a 350 degree oven for about 50, 55 minutes, just until they start to set. I made these pot of creme last night. After I cooked them for about 55 minutes, I took them out of the hot water bath, placed them in the refrigerator, and let them chill for about 12 hours. Uh, as you can tell, they're nice and set right now. So I got some of this great uh, Oker's whipped cream here. I get a whipped cream every morning for Maggie's coffee because she's, well, speaking of that, Maggie, you got that coffee? I got it. Great. Perfect timing. And I love this coffee by design, their signature blend. It's dark and it supports local artists, which is always super important. Ooh, those look really good. Right? Yeah. You give it, you're going to love this. <laughs> give it to me. You sent me some cream, right? <laughs> Mm. Oh, I love the salt on it. Right? Ooh, what a nice surprise. Mm. So when we get back, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this great honey sambal shrimp dish. It's gonna be perfect. That sounds great. This is At Brown Trading Company, we source only the highest quality seafood, caviar, and gourmet foods for you and America's best restaurants. In our pursuit of perfection, we support sustainable fisheries in Maine and around the world. Extraordinary selection and highest quality are the hallmarks of what you will find here. Entertain your guests with a selection from our curated wine list and fresh cheeses cut to order. Whether you shop online or visit us in Portland, freshness is paramount and great care is taken to ensure your satisfaction. Hi everybody, welcome to today's chef tip. What we're gonna make today is blue cheese agro dulce. I first learned this recipe when I was living in Italy and I actually performed it on stage at a beekeeping event. That's where Maggie and I really met. She'd been asking me all the time on how to make it. It's so easy, so I guess I'm just gonna show everyone how to do this. So the only thing you need is a high speed blender. We're gonna be using gargonzola cheese, which is like an Italian version of blue cheese. So we're gonna put that in here. Then we're gonna add a little bit of some of our honey that Maggie and I tend. Don't worry about the exact measurements. If you follow along at platethestate.com, we'll have all the recipes there for you. Now I'm gonna start really low on this. Once that cheese and the honey have really emulsified, that's it. So we're gonna pour this out. So I love using this recipe for any type of uh, steak dish. It goes great with fruits. What I'm gonna do is I have just some griddled crostini bread right here and we're just gonna drizzle this nice agro dulce all around. Oh, look at that consistency. Here's some toasted walnuts with a little bit of garlic. I'm gonna sprinkle that on. A little bit of Maine sea salt. And a couple cracks of pepper. This is a great little appetizer or hors d'oeuvre. Thanks for watching today's Chef Tip. You can find all of our recipes on platethestate.com. We're getting there to sunnier days, being with the ones we love, and now with those you've missed. This is you remastering the art of life. And while you're getting back at it, we'll be here to help you master the art of money. Norway Savings. Live your life in color. This week's Pantry Tip is brought to you by Norway Savings Bank. Hi, and welcome to today's Honey Pantry Tip. I'm going to be showing you a deliciously useful brown sugar and honey scrub. Honey has been used for thousands of years as a beauty treatment. It's brightening, it's exfoliating, and of course, it makes you extra sweet. So all you need is coconut oil, raw organic coconut oil, brown sugar, and organic honey. You don't wanna be putting things that aren't organic on our skin. And so everything in this is edible. You can use it on your hands, on your face, on your feet. It is very slippery, so if you're using it in the shower, buyer beware. All right. 
So what we're going to do is take a third cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of that organic coconut oil, and some beautiful honey. This is from our harvest last fall. And then an essential oil of your choice. I like using citrus because it's nice, brightening and energizing. Rose is also a really nice option. And then all we're gonna do is whisk this together. So it's gonna almost have a dry cookie dough consistency. And if you have any really pretty jars around your house, this makes a great last minute birthday gift, hostess gift. And then we're gonna put it in this really cute jar. We're gonna store it in a cool dry place for about a month. And there we go. And you can find all of our pantry tips on platethestate.com. Oh, the atmosphere here is exciting. It's, it's pretty cool. You won't find this selection anywhere else. Take four pounds. By far, we are the place that you want to go to buy the highest quality seafood that you can get. 90-some percent of the restaurants in this neck of the woods use harbor fishing for good reason. Quality is never a question when you walk through the door here. You're always going to find it. Welcome back to Plate the State. As Josh teased while we were making those delicious honeyed pot de creme, we are now going to make a honey sambal shrimp dish. And again, all of these recipes are found on our website at platethestate.com. Josh, what are we doing? Oh my God. So I know, Maggie, you love shrimp and you love spicy and we love honey. So I'm putting all of these in one dish. You're so small. So I poached some shrimp off. Um, always poach your shrimp in a little bit of uh, court bouillon uh, seasoned water, right? Add some wine, some lemon, peppercorns, a little bit of onion in there. Give it some really good flavor. And then I chilled them down. So this is some cooked and chilled shrimp. Okay. And we have a little fairy tale eggplants, right? Fun fact, if you want your kids to eat eggplants, <laughs> make sure they're fairy tale eggplants. Some fresh chopped ginger. Go ahead and add that right in there. Ooh. I love garlic, good. right? Yeah. So we're gonna add some garlic. Mm -hmm. Keep the vampires away. Yep. Drizzle in all that honey. All of it? Yeah. Goodness, okay. Perfect. I love that you're showing us how to be really um, diverse with honey and recipes. It's not just right? for desserts, right? I mean, we've done yeah. desserts, we've done scrubs. <laughs> yeah. Right? So this is sambal. So this is like a nice spicy chili paste. Mm -hmm. You can see all the spice and chilies in there. Put a little bit of spice in there. Make it extra spicy. I know you like it extra spicy. <laughs> and then you love cilantro, oh, so really go ahead awesome. and add You know all there. my favorite things, yep. I love this. Okay. And this is healthy too. Oh, this is gonna be great. While you're mixing that, I'm gonna squeeze a okay. little bit of lime juice into there. Are these the eggplants we got from Dandelion Spring Farm? Yeah. At the uh, farmer's market? Beth grows us. And this is her garlic too. Oh. Okay, so I'm gonna season that with a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And if you don't like eggplant in this dish, you could put uh, roasted peppers, it could be some bok choy, um, some onion would be great in that. Okay, Maggie, why don't you go ahead and dump this on this okay. pan here. What's this mat? So this again? is called a silpat. It's a silicone baking mat. Um, just prevents anything from sticking to it. Once we get all that in there, we're just gonna move this aside, okay? Now you're gonna to wanna to set your oven to broil, and we're remember the shrimp's already cooked, so we're just gonna get a little bit of color on that shrimp. That's really what we're looking for. And that honey is gonna help caramelize and get really nice and sticky sweet. All right, that's on broil for you. All right, perfect. <laughs> and remember that all of these recipes are on platethestate.com, and we love when you follow us on social media at platethestate. Maggie, you want to grab that beer? Sure. Which one is it? The, it's the Mass Landing right. IPA. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, I always love Mass Landing cans. They're so pretty. Yeah, we chose uh, this Mass Landing uh, Mountain in the Clouds just mm -hmm. because uh, the IPA is really going to enhance the flavor of the uh, chili. Yeah. And then since I know you love spice, I think this is going to be a perfect match. I'm excited to try that. Right. 
While we can open this and we can try it out, that shrimp's only gonna take about five, 10 minutes on a high broil. And remember, we just wanna get a little bit of color on there. I'm gonna go check the shrimp. Okay, awesome. Okay. Ooh. Perfect. so good. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's such a pretty Edgecombe Potter bowl. I love Edgecombe Pottery. It's some great work. So, mm. I love these silicone mats because these just slide right off. It smells so good. Right? And this dish is great with a little bit of steamed rice, a little bit of uh, some fresh more lime, a little bit more cilantro on there. And of course, this wonderful beer. And should you have any leftovers, which you might not, when we come back, Chef Josh will show us what to do with them. <laughs> At Town & Country Federal Credit Union, our mobile app lets you do almost anything from anywhere. Deposit checks, pay bills, move money, and much more. And if you need us, we're always here to help. Learn more at tcfcu.com. Today's leftover ideas are brought to you by Town & Country Federal Credit Union, helping you stretch your food dollars. Hi, welcome to today's leftover idea. We have some shrimp from our honey sambal shrimp dish that we did. I've added a little bit of bib lettuce, some cellophane noodles here, a little bit of the eggplant, some shrimp. I chopped some mint, some of these fiery chilies, and a little bit of snow peas just julienned up. And what I'm gonna do is add a little bit of rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, and a little bit of fish sauce. And then I'm gonna mix all of that together. And this is gonna make a great lunch. Nice and light. That spice is still gonna transition well through there and it's gonna cool it down with a little bit of the mint and the ginger from the shrimp. We're gonna finish that with a little bit of cracked pepper and some salt. And this is gonna be perfect. Hey Maggie, you wanna try this? Yes, I've been waiting to try this. This looks so good. <laughs> Great. Uh, thanks to all of you for joining us on this episode of Plate the State. And please follow along on Instagram and Facebook at Plate the State. And we love it when you share your recipes with us. And special thanks to Hancock Lumber for letting us use this beautiful kitchen. <laughs> and from both of us and all of our sponsors, cheers to wherever your appetite takes you. And we'll see you next time. Gotta get the chili part. <laughs> So correct me if I'm wrong, and you can share all of your favorite honeybee, and would love if you'd share your favorite honeybee. Oh my God, what is she saying honeybee? That's not even a word. Nope. Ooh, let me take over for okay. a second. Oh, now it's perfect. <laughs>